All right. So here we have question number five onwards. <clears throat> A level mass 9709 February March 2022. Pure mass one. This question is worth six marks. So express 2x square minus 8x plus 14 in the form of 2 multiplied by x minus a the whole thing square plus b where 2 is also multiplied with b along with x minus a whole squared. So what you can do, you can just expand this form in terms of A and B and just equate the coefficients over here so that you can get the values of A and B. But my approach would be over here to convert this general form of the quadratic expression into a completing square form. And for that purpose, I use the formula since we know the fact that the general form of the quadratic expression is in the form of AX square plus BX plus C, where A is the coefficient of x square b is the coefficient of x and c is the constant term so, so the formula for it is a times x plus b over 2a whole squared plus 4ac minus b squared and then divided by 4a so 2 multiplied by x plus minus 8 over 2 times 2 the whole thing is square plus 4 into 2 into 14 minus minus 8 squared and then divided by four times two so two uh, uh, multiplied by x minus eight over four which means x minus two so x minus two the whole thing squared and then four multiplied by two multiplied by 14 minus 64 and then divided by eight this will give you positive six but you need to express this express this into this form so taking two as a common factor, two as common multiplied by x minus two whole squared plus three, such that when you multiply two with three, so you get six. So this is supposed to be your answer to part A for two marks. Then we have transformations of functions. And a functions f and g are defined by fx equals x squared and gx equals 2x square minus 8x plus 14 and both functions have unrestricted domain both functions are having the domain that x can take all real values part b is saying that describe fully a sequence of transformations that maps the graph of y equals fx onto the graph of y equals gx making clear the order in which the transformations are applied <clears throat> so what you can do over here is that you can take exactly this form, which was required in part A, because gx is 2x squared minus 8x plus 14. And as you can see that 2x squared minus 8x plus 14 can be converted into this form. Either you can take this form or you can take this form. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this form. Okay, so in order to make you understand how to use a sequence of transformations over here, Okay, so two times x minus two, the whole thing squared and then plus six. So fx equals fx equals x square and gx equals instead of two x square minus eight x plus 14, I'm using this form. Two multiplied by x minus two whole square and then plus six. Okay, so as you can see that there are three types of uh, transformations over here a constant term 2 is being subtracted within a function it is multiplied with 2 as well and then and then a constant term 6 is added after the function so what i'm going to do i'm going to individually inspect each and every single transformation to identify which one is horizontal and which one is vertical and you, you should know the fact that when multiple horizontal and vertical transformations are combined when horizontal and vertical are combined together so in which order you apply in which order you apply it doesn't matter at all your final outcome will be the same but when vertical transformations are combined so you need to follow the normal order of arithmetic operations when horizontal transformations are combined 
only horizontal are combined. So you need to follow the reverse order of arithmetic operations. So first of all, I'm going to inspect each and every transformation over here individually in order to just identify which one is vertical and which one is horizontal. So first of all, let's just uh, take this thing that fx is transformed onto fx minus 2. That a constant term is being subtracted within a function. So this is a translation by the column vector 2, 0. The translation in the x direction, therefore it is a horizontal transformation. Okay. First of all, I'm just uh, uh, identifying nothing else. I'm going to mention the complete answer, the complete description order wise. Okay. So I'm just dictating over here that what is happening. So I'm just, I've just identified that when fx is transformed onto fx minus 2, such that the input of the function is x minus 2 instead of x, it is a horizontal transformation. Then Let's just ignore this thing now and just consider this fact that a constant term 6 is added after a function. So fx is fx is transformed onto fx and then plus 6. So this is translation by the column vector 0, 6, translation in the y direction. So translation by the column vector 0, 6, this is a vertical transformation. I've just identified that this one is a vertical transformation. Now let's just ignore these two things over here and just consider the fact that fx is transformed onto two times fx, that a constant term two is multiplied with a function. So this is basically stretch in the y direction with factor two. Okay, so each y coordinate will be multiplied by two and x coordinate will, uh, x coordinate will remain the same. This one is also a vertical transformation. So far, I've identified that which one is vertical and which one is horizontal. Okay. So now what you can do, you can make a combination of these. You can make a combination of these. Let's say, for example, <clears throat> I'm taking this horizontal one. I'm taking this horizontal one and this vertical one. this horizontal one and this vertical one and this vertical one in the end. So if you take, if you just take horizontal and vertical together, these two ones. So in which order you apply, it doesn't matter at all. So if I take this horizontal and vertical only, so fx will be transformed onto two times fx minus two. So for example, if I'm doing a stretch first, fx is transformed onto two times fx, and then two times fx is transformed onto two times fx minus two. So my final outcome won't be affected at all. Okay, and if even uh, and I'm combining the horizontal one and vertical one together. So as I've said, in which order you apply, it doesn't matter at all. So if fx is transformed onto fx minus two first and then it is multiplied by 2, the final outcome won't be affected at all. And then you are taking this vertical transformation in the end. So this was one of the ways to do this. And then finally, 2 times fx minus 2 is transformed onto 2 times fx minus 2 and then plus 6. This is one of the ways to do this. Okay. And other way could be Another way could be because first I made a combination of one horizontal and one vertical. Let's say now I am going to make a combination of two verticals first. So when I'm making a combination of two vertical first, I have to follow a normal order of arithmetic operations. That is, I have to multiply two first and then add six. I have to I have to use this sequence because my final outcome would be affected, may be affected. Sometimes it happens that it may not be affected. So in order to avoid any risks, we have to follow this sequence. When multiple vertical transformations are combined, you will follow the normal order of arithmetic operations. So you will say that fx is transformed onto first 
two times f x and then plus six because if you take it in the other way if you don't follow this normal order of arithmetic operations so first you will say that f x is transformed into f x and then plus six and then a constant term two is multiplied with the whole function so this would be affected this will give you two times six which is 12 and yes your final outcome would be affected so here you have to follow a normal order of arithmetic operations okay and then you can take this horizontal transformation in the end so two times fx and then plus six can be transformed onto two times fx minus two and then plus six there you go i can take a third combination as well that if i take this horizontal and this vertical first so in which order i apply it really doesn't matter at all so this horizontal and this vertical but since you are taking the uh, since since you are taking this vertical transformation separately okay so since you are taking this vertical transformation separately and as you can see that this one is vertical and this one is also vertical so you have to follow a normal order of arithmetic sequence over here that is that is to first multiply the function with two the constant term two so you cannot take this horizontal and vertical first you have to take this vertical transformation first so fx is transformed onto two times fx and then you can take these both in which order you like so two times fx will be transformed onto two times f x minus two and then plus six because if you take these horizontal and vertical first what is going to happen just see that if you take these two horizontal and vertical first i mean these two transformation one is horizontal and one is vertical fx is transformed onto let's say f x minus 2 and then plus 6 and then if you take the vertical in the end so the constant term 2 will be multiplied with the whole function and then you will get this 2 times 6 which is 12 which will be wrong okay so you have to uh, consider the rules of the sequence and you need a significant amount of practice sufficient amount of practice to deal with such type of questions so you uh, i mean the three types of combinations which i have explained to you you can take any of them so uh, the first combination which i took was take this horizontal one and this vertical one and then in the end you can take the vertical transformation over here okay so i'm taking this horizontal one and this vertical one first and in which order i apply it doesn't matter at all fx is transformed onto fx is transformed onto two times f x minus two and then this vertical is taken in the end and a constant term six is added after a function so far this was the explanation now it's time to write the final answer in description you know in which sequence you need to apply so first of all or what i'm going for uh, what i'm going to do I'm going to stretch it first. So you can mention stretch. First, you can mention stretch in the y direction. Stretch in the y direction with factor two. And then you have two types of translations. When two types of translation, one horizontal one and one vertical one, you can combine it, combine them into one single column vector. As you know, the fact that when fx is transformed into fx minus two, this is translation by the column vector two zero. And you also know the fact that when fx and then plus six, a constant term six is added after the function. So when fx is transformed into fx and then plus six, this is a translation by the column vector zero six. So if I take I have, and you are taking these together 
Okay, so you can just combine them in one single column vector. So I can say that first stretch in the y direction with vector two, then translation translation by the column vector two six such that in the x in such that in the x direction you have to add two units. And in the y direction, you have to add six unit, six units. Okay. So the thing is that intentionally I chose this form in order to give you a detailed explanation over here. I did this thing intentionally. Okay. If you take this one, this could have been a lot much more easier, but uh, I mean, so far explanation, which I've given to you that would not be required then. Okay. So that's why I chose this form. So if you choose that this form, which was required in the question in the earlier part in part A to multiply it by completely X minus two, the whole thing squared and then plus three. So what you can see over here is that, um, first of all, X squared is transformed onto X minus two, the whole thing squared, and then you have added three to it. And then you have in the end, you have done the stretch in the y direction with factor two. So your alternative answer could be first, you mentioned the translations together. Translation by column vector two, three, column vector two, three, and then stretch in the y direction with factor two. So as you can see that when we are following this, uh, this form first so that the, so the column vector is different and here the column vector is different. So in order to give you a detailed explanation over here, I intentionally chose this form. So tr translation by the column vector two, three, and then a stretch, stretch in the Y direction with factor two. So both or of both of your answers are acceptable. <clears throat> Okay, so my approach would be in this case would be like this. This looks much more good. 